Bringing Northern Ohio to your door every month, Northern Ohio Live Magazine's proud to support Live from the Circle. Dining, theater, basically all that's unique to our region can be found on northernohiolive.com. Arts, culture, and living. Northern Ohio Live. You know, Mark, Ebony Frank or uh, Caps F? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was easy. Welcome to the beginning of the end of the 2007 wine season. The vines have been cleared for the most part. The fun has only just begun. Mm, like vanilla. Here's what it looks like going in. For the past six years, it's been going in at a greater volume at Lorello Vineyards, located just outside of Geneva. This part-time hobby turned professional passion for Larry Lorello and his pals Doug, Dave, and Rod has yielded a fruitful reward for wine lovers across the region. We're specializing in, in dry vinifera grape, uh, meaning uh, the Chardonnays, Pinot Grigios, Rieslings. We just now start out with a little bit of uh, Gewurztraminer and uh, a little Viognier. Uh, but we, I think we're probably a little bit more known in this area for some of our reds. Uh, we've got a couple of reds that are uh, namesakes, Rodavi and, and Cosmo, are named after my grandfather and a couple of friends that, that make wine here. Lorello and his band of wine-loving brothers don't claim to be experts at executing the perfect glass of vino, but they understand the variables that can make or break a good grape. Water is only a friend if you have the right amount. If you have too much of it, it's, it's bad for the grapes. While gray and gloomy days like today might bring any of us down, it's weather like this that has Northeast Ohio winery owners feeling excited because they're able to take phenomenal grapes like these right off the vine and processing them into barrels like these right here, where it eventually ends up right here, proving that Ohio vineyards can be major players in the wine industry. I've been telling everybody that comes in the winery that if, if global warming is doing it, then hurrah for Ohio, you know. Now, for the record, Lorello isn't advocating anti-green living, but he does admit that the weather this past season was phenomenal for growing grapes, something that consumers should keep in mind down the road. I think the climate around here is, is very good for growing grapes. Some years are not, so, not as good um, as far as the people of Ohio. Uh, most of our wines are sold in Ohio, and most of the wineries are that way. but. Um, for the people of Ohio to remember that in 2008, 2009, when you see 2007 vintage on anything from Ohio, you're getting some really good quality wines. Oh, that's nice. I know what you're thinking. Good quality dry wines from Ohio in a state historically known for its sweet wines. Vineyards in the Buckeye State are proving that their offerings can exceed expectations, perhaps gain national recognition. So what do you think? Quaffable, but uh, far from transcendent. I like it. It's great. Hollywood has embraced its love for wine. Paul Giamatti leads a cast that highlights wine from Napa Valley in the movie Sideways. I've come never to expect greatness from a Cab Franc, and this one is no different. It's kind of a hollow, flabby, overripe. I don't know. It tastes pretty good to me. There are fads, but what you're seeing is the education is spreading out more in American palates. People want to taste wine more. They want to know more about it, so when they come into somewhere, they don't want to see that Cabernet Sauvignon when they say, oh, I saw something about Pinot Noir. So the more they see, the more they want to learn, and that's what's broadening the market. Why are you so into Pinot? <laughs> I mean, it's like a thing with you. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's a hard grape to grow. In Northeast Ohio, wineries' recognition might not be coming from Pinot, yet. From season to season, you're going to get good grapes, and if you do a good job, you're going to end up with very good wine. In Northeast Ohio and in Ohio, we'll put, a, get, put our whites against any whites in the, in the country and not be afraid to go against some competition. So as you prepare your holiday feast this year and you see a local bottle of wine on the shelves, recognize the time and effort that went into that wine and realize that what makes good wine today will be even better this time next year. We're making good quality wine and you don't want to spend the money for $3 gas to get out to Napa Valley, we become a pretty darn good alternative. And uh, that's, you, you don't have to travel very far to find quality, and uh, we just got to get people to notice it.